Welcome to a lesson on the goodness of fit test for a chi-square distribution. A goodness of fit test is used to determine whether the data fit a particular distribution or not. For example, we may suspect unknown data fit a binomial distribution. We use a chi-square test, meaning the distribution for the hypothesis test is chi-square, to determine, to determine if there is a fit or not. The null and alternative hypotheses for this test may be written in sentences or may be stated as equations or inequalities. The test statistic for a goodness of fit test is chi-square given by the formula shown here, where we have the sum of k terms in the form of the square of O minus E divided by E, where O equals the observed values, E equals the expected values, and k equals the number of different data cells or categories. The observed values are the data values, and the expected values are the values we would expect to get if the null hypothesis were true. There are n terms in the form of the square of O minus E divided by E. The number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of categories minus one. The goodness of fit test is almost always right-tailed. If the observed values and the corresponding expected values are not close to each other, then the test statistic, or chi-square, can get very large and will be way out in the right tail of the chi-square curve. It's also important to note the expected value for each cell needs to be at least five in order to use this test. Let's take a look at an example. Employers want to know which days of the week employees are absent in a five-day work week. Most employers would like to believe that employees are absent equally during the week. Suppose a random sample of 60 managers were asked on which day of the week they had the highest number of employee absences. The results were distributed as shown in the table below. For the population of employees, do the days for the highest number of absences occur with equal frequencies during a five-day work week? Test at a 5% significance level. So to begin, because we are testing at a 5% significance level, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And now for the null and alternative hypotheses, since the question is, do the days for the highest number of absences occur with equal frequencies during a five-day work week, the null hypothesis is the absent days occur with equal frequencies, that is, they fit a uniform distribution. And therefore, the alternative hypothesis is the absent days occur with unequal frequencies, that is, they do not fit a uniform distribution. If the absent days occur with equal frequencies, then out of 60 absent days, again, the sum of the absent days in the table is 60, then there would be 12 absences each day, since 60 divided by 5 is equal to 12. These numbers are the expected values, or E, in the formula. The values in the table are the observed values, or the data, which is O. So now we have the information we need to calculate chi-square. Again, we have the expected values, and we have the observed values. Using the formula shown here below for chi-square, again, each term is in the form of the square of O minus E divided by E. So the first fraction here is the square of 15 minus 12 divided by 12. The second fraction is the square of 12 minus 12 divided by 12. The third fraction is the square of 9 minus 12 divided by 12. The fourth fraction, again, is the square of 9 minus 12 divided by 12. And the fifth fraction is the square of 15 minus 12 divided by 12. Simplifying each fraction and adding, chi-square is equal to 3. And now that we have chi-square, in order to find the corresponding p-value, we need to recognize that the degrees of freedom are equal to five minus one, or four, because there are five categories, Monday through Friday. And the p-value is equal to the probability chi-square is greater than or equal to three. To find the p-value, we will now go to the TID4 calculator and use the chi-square CDF function. From the home screen, we press second vars for the distribution menu. We want option eight, chi-square CDF. We enter the lower bound, comma, the upper bound, comma, the degrees of freedom. Because we have a right-tailed test, the lower bound is three, comma. We exaggerate the upper bound, for example, 999999, comma, the degrees of freedom, which are four. Close parenthesis and enter. To four decimal places, we have approximately 0 0.5578. Before we compare the p-value to alpha, let's take a look at the graph here on the right. Here we have the chi-square distribution with the degrees of freedom are equal to four. Our test statistic is chi-squared equals three, which is shown here, which means the p-value 
is equal to the shaded area here to the right, which is also equal to the probability chi squared is greater than or equal to three. Notice how this probability is very high, which means the likelihood of chi squared being greater than or equal to three is not very rare. And now comparing the p-value to alpha, notice how the p-value is high and therefore the null must fly, or more formally, because the p-value is greater than alpha, or because alpha is less than the p-value, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Where remember the null hypothesis is, the absent days occur with equal frequencies, that is, they fit a uniform distribution. So because we do not reject the null hypothesis, our final conclusion is, at a 5% level of significance from the sample data, there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the absent days do not occur with equal frequencies. I hope you found this helpful.